hello everyone welcome to another video so in this we will see how memory is allocated and deallocated for the objects in java this video will have two components one is the theoretical component and other one is hands-on where we will see live when object is allocated a memory then we will see the complete detail in heap so without any further delay let's start in one of my previous video where we have discussed about JVM architecture, so we have already seen this component runtime data area. So this area is actually used to allocate the memory. Specifically, all the objects are getting stored in heap area here. And all the references to those objects is stored in uh, stack. Now let's see a heap memory. So heap memory itself is mainly divided into component. One is young generation and other one is old generation. There is one off heap component as well, which is also known as permanent generation. Most of the memory allocation and deallocation will happen under young generation and old generation only. The young generation itself is further divided into three component, Eden, Survivor Space first and Survivor Space second. We can mark it as Survivor 0 and Survivor 1. Any new object which is getting created uh, in Java, those will be uh, allocated memory inside the Eden space. And it will keep on adding all the newly created objects to Eden space. And once Eden space is full, then a minor GC will happen. Minor GC is a minor garbage collection, which will be happening in young generation only to clear the Eden space. The garbage collector then will check what all objects are unreferenced and not used. Those will be removed from the memory. All the other objects which uh, are having references to them or are being used, uh, they are termed as survivors. So they will be moved from Eden to survivors zero space. In that way, we will again have Eden space empty. And again, uh, all the new objects which are getting created in Java, those will again started filling up the Eden space. And once the Eden space is again full, then again a minor GC will happen. And all the survivor objects then will be moved to the other survivor space, which is survivor one. So not only from the Eden space, but from uh, survivor zero as well, if any components are no longer referenced, those will be removed by garbage collector. And if uh, there are still some survivors which are having references, those will be moved to the survivor one space. But they, uh, there is one property associated to all the objects which is aging. So that aging will be incremented in that case. Suppose when an object is uh, first time moved from Eden to survivor zero, then the aging attribute uh, become one because they have survived one garbage collection. But after the second survival also, their uh, so, um, aging attribute will be uh, upgraded, updated to two because they have survived two garbage collections. This aging attribute is important because uh, once Eden survivor space zero and survivor space one are also full and uh, there is a configured value in the JVM itself like if some objects they have crossed a specific limit of aging then they are moved from young generation itself to the old generation and once they are moved to the old generation again we will have Eden survivor and survivor spaces empty. So all the minor GCs will happen in young generation. These minor GCs takes a very less time because uh, very less number of objects or less, very less memory is there. And uh, once the old generation itself is getting full, then a major GC will happen. So major GC uh, will clean up the old generation. And as the memory area is large and number of objects is huge, so it will take a lot of time. And that can actually impact your application performance. So while debugging the performance issues related to your applications, you can uh, check out for the major GCs as well. If your application is performing too many major garbage collections frequently, then you need to see in your application if the memory enhancements or memory tweaks are required because a major garbage collection will impact the application performance up to a great extent.
now let's see uh, how the object allocation is happening uh, we will write a code in java then we will execute it in debug mode and in parallel we will be using java visual vm to see how the objects are getting created in the heap and uh, then we will also perform garbage collection uh, by uh, doing various combinations in the code to see how it is getting garbage collected this is java visual vm we have seen that in one of our previous videos also where i have explained uh, memory leaks topic so if you want to check it out please check out the playlist i will also share the link in description so now let's try to code so i have this uh, student class with me which is having three instance variable its id name and a list of courses so let me just uh, import the missing imports then we have uh, it's all the setter getter methods and a constructor for this class so all these methods you can generate uh, through the ide help itself you can just right click on it under the sources we have options for getter setter and generating the constructor using field so using this now our uh, main class is ready for which we will be creating the objects now this is the main class where main method is there so to just start I have a print statement to just print a start on console then I have a list of students uh, under which I will be adding all the objects of students and using this for loop I will be creating around 100k uh, student objects and add them to this uh, students list let's try to create student objects this is equal to new student so it requires three parameters so before that i need to create a list of courses as well just for the sake of simplicity i am adding course c in that list and that list i will be using here second one was the name of the student and then let's try to make it a dynamic value as well so it will be name and i am just appending the i counter with it and in the end we have id which is of type uh, long so let's try to give it a long value so now i think we are good let's add this uh, student object to the sts list so now we are ready with our students list and just one more uh, print statement in the end and we will apply breakpoints so one is already there on the start line and one i will apply on the last line of program now let me save and uh, execute this code so what we will be doing we will be debugging it as a java application so it will move to the debug mode okay and now it is uh, waiting at line number nine now let's check the JV, uh, java visual vm here also you can see one uh, entry is made for test memory allocation class which currently i'm running so double click on that to load the details so now we have this complete detail uh, but as of now we will be concentrating mainly on the memory and sampler side itself uh, but we can get those details from the heap dump as well but that will be a kind of like whenever we click on heap dump at that time it will only tell uh, what is the detail so if i go to the sampler and click on the memory it will tell me what all details are currently present in the memory what all objects are present in heap memory here so this is the live data currently that student class is not uh, created that list is not created so now let's just uh, create that i will skip this so now uh, it is on line number 18 and i am supposing that uh, student list is already created so let's check in the visual vm okay so here you can see uh, exactly 100k uh, student objects are created due to this specific line because we are creating student objects uh, with the and adding it to the list itself so you can see uh, these same number of instances for student is created and here you can also see there are some other uh, things which we have created like array list so why this this almost same amount of array list is generated this you can see because uh, for adding the courses we are again creating the array list that is why almost similar number of objects or instances are created for array list as well so uh, now, now i am uh, in the last line of the code so if i try to perform gc let's see how it will happen 
so i have performed gc nothing has happened because these things are still uh, getting used or still getting referenced what does it mean this sts list is still uh, this reference is still pointing to the memory location where that list is stored in heap so as soon as i uh, go out of this method then it will uh, become eligible for garbage collection otherwise no or if i want to do it explicitly i need to set the sts to uh, null itself so i have just completed its execution so before that itself let's try to uh, set the sts to null so and i will set a breakpoint here as well at 18 and 19th line so now what i'm expecting is when the line number 18 is executed and after that if i uh, request for garbage collection it should clear all the student objects from heap memory that is how uh, the memory is working that's how we have already discussed how these things work with that itself uh, let's try to uh, enhance its performance as well so uh, we are as we are creating the same course of uh, list every time let's try to make it only a single time because if you see if this thing is placed inside this for loop then it is happening the as many number of times the iteration of that loop so as of now we are creating it only once so i'm hoping that those extra objects which are getting created for array list those will also be gone now let's try to uh, debug it again debug as java application now the execution has begun let's try to open the uh, visual vm as well you can see uh, the jvm component is created let's go inside go to the sampler and click on memory so in memory uh, as it is still on the first line so no uh, student object is created let's try to move it further so now it is line number 18 so i am expecting student objects are created so here you can see the student objects uh, are created but you uh, there is one change you can see the array list objects are not there because those many number of array list objects are not created that count will be very low either one or two at this specific time because we have moved those uh, specific set of statements outside the for loop okay now last time when we uh, moved to the uh, last statement of the program the student uh, objects were uh, not eligible for garbage collection even though we perform the garbage collection so even now itself if i try to perform garbage collection the student object will remain as it is because till this point uh, the sts is still pointing to the objects in the memory now let's move, just move one step forward so with this now sts is pointing to null so now whenever uh, garbage collection is automatically called it will clean up the student uh, objects but let's try to perform it manually if i click on garbage perform gc and here you can see the student all the student objects around uh, one lakh objects were there all of them are gone so this is how memory allocation and memory deallocation is working in case of java and in the mem uh, monitor tab itself also we can see as the garbage collection happened the used memory also dropped so uh, this is how you can monitor the heap memory as well from this monitor tab in one of the uh, next videos i will definitely try to uh, create a video how to utilize java visual vm effectively so that we can debug the any java memory related issues one topic that we missed earlier in our theoretical part was a permanent generation so that actually specific portion is off heap area but uh, the kind of data which it stores is of type permanent it can be configurations or the static details that uh, are getting stored in permanent generation garbage collection does not happen for this specific part of the memory these will be loaded when the jvm is loaded and uh, all the contents will be cleared once jvm is uh, killed or shut down just to summarize what we have uh, discussed today we have seen heap memory area how the memory is allocated and deallocated in heap area the garbage collections also and uh, we have seen what kind of, we have discussed what kind of data is getting stored in the young generation old generation and inside young generation itself what are its subcomponents like eden space survivor spaces and in the end we have also seen permanent generation as well so we have seen in detail with the uh, example and live demonstration using java visual vm 
that uh, how the objects are getting stored in heap and uh, and how and when the objects are getting stored in heap and how their deallocation is also happening that's it for this video so if you like the video please do subscribe if you have any specific topic that you want me to cover please do comment and also share your feedback on the video as well thanks for watching